Let us learn today a little bit more about the most holy body and blood of the Lord, or Corpus Christi. Corpus Christi is when we celebrate the body and blood of Jesus Christ. The name Corpus Christi comes from Latin, which means the body of Christ. Why is the body and blood of Jesus so important? To understand, we need to go way back to the beginning, to Genesis, the first book of the Bible. In the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve ate of the tree that God told them not to, as they were tempted by a snake. But who was that snake for real? That's right, it was the devil. And when they ate of the tree, they broke the relationship they had with God and they lost the grace that God had given them. This was very bad because God loves us and wants to give us divine life as a gift. He wants us to be happy with him. We cannot steal it. Because Adam and Eve ate of the tree that they were not supposed to, it was considered a bad meal. And this bad meal of Adam and Eve led to original sin, which we are all born with. We know that Jesus likes good meals, and we read often in the Bible that he would sit down with his disciples and eat. You remember the story of the multiplication of the fish and the loaves? Remember, Jesus asked the disciples to feed all those people that had come to listen to him because he knew that they were hungry. And the disciples said that they only had five loaves and two fish. And Jesus made a miracle and was able to feed 5,000 people, not including women and children. And after they were all fed, there were still 12 baskets left over. Jesus loves us and takes care of us. And he wants to remove the bad meal of Eden. In the gospel today, boys and girls, we learned about one special meal he celebrated with his disciples. He celebrated this meal at Passover, which is when they remembered how God had freed them from slavery in Egypt. What was this called? The Last Supper, that's right. At the Last Supper, Jesus shared a loaf of bread and a cup of wine with his friends. Jesus offers the bread and wine as his own body and blood to nourish them with its life-giving power. Just as our bodies need nour nourishment to live, so do our souls. His words turn the bread and wine into his body and blood. This is called transubstantiation. Can you say it with me? Transubstantiation. This is when Father, in the person, persona of Christi, or in the person of Jesus, says the same words as Jesus. And then he transforms the bread and wine into the body and blood of Christ during the Eucharist at Mass. So when you receive the Eucharist, that is Jesus himself that you're receiving. And of course, we remember that Jesus sacrificed his life to save us and the world. The Eucharist is Jesus, even though it does not look like him. With the Eucharist, Jesus feeds us as he feeds the crowds. And this meal takes away the bad meal of Adam and Eve. At every Sunday at Mass, when we come as one large family to celebrate something which happened for all of us, the resurrection of Jesus, we share this meal together just as Jesus did at the Last Supper. At our celebration of the Eucharist, which means Thanksgiving, we remember the meal which Jesus shared with his friends the night before he died, and we share in his death and resurrection. We believe that through the power of God, the bread and wine become the body and blood of Jesus, who gives himself to each one of us in a very special way. 
Jesus shows us how much he loves us and he shows this every time we go to Mass and receive the Eucharist. And the more we receive the Eucharist, the more we become like Jesus. But it is more than that. We are the body of Christ, not just once, but every day, all the time. It is a covenant. And what does covenant mean? It's a promise. It's a choice. It's a responsibility and a commitment. So we come to church on Sundays to celebrate and remember that Jesus is the bread of life. Jesus gave us new life and promises us eternal life with him in heaven. Do you remember the third commandment? I know you do. It's remember to keep holy the Lord's day. And which is the Lord's day? Sunday, that's right. So it commands us to gather as the body of Christ at least once a week. And we can do that, can't we, boys and girls? The Our Father, which is a prayer that Jesus gave us, is a prayer of the body of Christ. Because as the body of Christ on earth, you and I are to be making disciples and creating a kingdom where everyone is together here on earth as it is in heaven. Jesus came to tell us to give us the power of the spirit so we could continue building up the body of Christ. Do you remember what Jesus said? That's right, he said, I am the bread of life. And when we share the Eucharistic meal, when we share in this bread and blood, we share life with the Son of God himself. The Feast of Corpus Christi is such an important feast that Father takes the body of blood of Christ, which we call the Blessed Sacrament, into the streets of our neighborhood each year. I usually ask the First Communion students to come dressed up in their communion outfits to join the procession. Why, you ask? Because they receive the body and blood of Jesus for the first time. So this is a beautiful expression of our faith. And we ask the children to throw flowers before the Blessed Sacrament or before Jesus that is carried by Father. The procession stops at homes where families have set up special altars for Father to rest the Blessed Sacrament. And in some places around the world, people actually make designs on the ground with flower petals for the priest to walk on with Jesus. And this is the Feast of Corpus Christi, when we celebrate the body and blood of Jesus Christ and we know that we are also the body of Christ on earth.